the Lapa Hall is about 10 miles east of here, and it flows into, uh, it goes by Lakeland uh-huh. over there. Well, I didn't grow up there now. <laughs> now, my daddy, uh, uh, he inherited a bunch of property out there from his father. So, I don't know what happened. Bad times, hard times come, this, that, and the other, and he lost that property. And he moved around Ray City here. And I began to go to school here at Ray City. And that's where I grew up. I was, uh, let's see, about 11, 11 or 12 year old. Well, I was born in 11, there. And uh, so my daddy moved over here in about uh, 17 or 18, I believe it was. Well, in 1922, my sister bought a place right outside of Ray City here. She had a husband. She married two brothers. It married two brothers. One of them was lost on the old Tronto boat. You see that statue up in Nashville up there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Her first husband was lost there. Well, when his younger brother came back, she married him. And uh, she bought this place, and we moved to it, and uh, that was in 1922. And she bought a, a player piano. You know what that is? Okay, she bought this player piano, and that was one of the greatest things I think that ever happened in my life when she bought that player piano. I used to sit down there and pedal that player piano, and about that time I bought a saxophone. And... Uh, most of them old fellas cut them records, they played them in the key of C. Well, this is old C melody saxophone I had. I'd just sit down there and, and pedal that uh, old player piano and play that saxophone right along with it. <laughs> Five foot two and eyes of blue and, and old Charleston tunes and things of that nature. The first guitar I ever bought, I bought it from a black man. He lived here in Ray City. He lived here in Ray City. The first one I heard used to play at square dances. His name was Woods. He's Woods. dead now, Oliver Woods. It, it was here, it, here in Ray here. City. Now, I'll tell you something else. I'll straighten something else out. Uh, you've heard tell of juke joints. Well, I have read in the paper People in Chicago and places like that say they didn't know where the word came from. Well, I know it come from right here in South Georgia, right here in South Georgia. Now, what they said up there in Chicago, there's some person up there that run a kind of a joint, you know, and, and their name was J-U-K-E, and, uh, and so they juke, and they, they called it a juke joint. That's not where it originated. Oh, they ought to come down here and find out something or another. The name originated right here in South Georgia. We used to have sawmills and turpentine stills, and we'd have uh, quarters, what they call. Now, that's the way it was. I know that's the way it was. And they sold uh, soda waters, ice cream, cold drinks, and moonshine, whiskey, and there's a lot of dancing that's going on down there. Yeah, right right down at these uh, juke joints. And now you know the way to spell that juke? J-O-O-K. Now that's the right pronunciation of a juke. It's not J-U-K-E. It's J-O-O-K. Joint. Now, if you don't believe what I'm saying, you ask any of the old-timers, that's some of them black people. That, that's their name. Yeah, they, they, they named it. Juke joint, where you dance and play and, and sing <laughs> and anything else you want to do around their places. I used to hang around them because I like to hear the black men playing a guitar. Now, actually, what they did, they'd, they'd take a guitar and they'd put a bottleneck on the little finger. Have you ever heard of a bottleneck? They'd put a bottleneck on the 
the little finger, and they'd come down here and play John Henry. You have never heard a white man play John Henry like a black man can play it. Uh, he'd slide that thing up down, slur it, you know, mm -hmm. and make all kind of... Mm -hmm. 